Um, in opening any conference like this, you inevitably feel like the air hostess who's going to say the fire exits are here, 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 and here. And if it all gets too much for you, oxygen will drop down from above. Uh, but we aren't expecting any fire drills today. Uh, so if the fire alarm does go off, we do need to leave the building. Can I please remind you to turn your mobile phones off or onto silent before we start? And you have in your pack a map of the venue, so that has got things like where the toilets are, etc. Uh, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about how the conference will work. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about was the title of the conference, which is Improving Performance Naturally, Transferring Sports Science and Medicine to Boat Speed. Um, it was decided upon by the the organising committee as to how they would like this conference to be seen and I think the title is important in terms of determining what it is we are going to be discussing. And I'd particularly like to thank the organising committee um, which were uh, Professor Greg White, Professor Alison McGregor, Fiona Wilson, and Redgrave, Anna Marie Phelps, uh, David Ziderman, myself with Sam at the Invisible Sam, who nobody knows who he is, but all of you have heard lots from him. <coughs> and uh, we, uh, I, I, that group were extremely uh, helpful in terms of setting up this conference in a completely different way from anything else that I've ever done. Uh, so because many of them are medics and sports scientists, the way that we in British rowing normally run our conferences is we go to a hotel, we stay in one venue, um, you never leave the venue, and um, we don't ever ask for papers, we don't ever invite anybody else to speak except perhaps people we choose to speak. And so they talked to me about how does a sports science, sports medicine conference run normally. And I think that that's what we have, well, I don't think, that is what we have tried to do with the conference here, is to run it in a different way which hopefully appeals to the scientists and the medics that are involved with rowing, uh, but also um, has given us a different view, or given me definitely a different view of how we might do things in the future. <coughs> the whole effort has been not just one or two people, it's been a lot of people. And I think the first thing is the amount of uh, generous support and energy and goodwill that's uh, been around to make this happen. And I've done it in alphabetical order because I thought that I couldn't really pick one group above another. Uh, but first of all, thank you to you. Many of you have travelled a lot of miles to be here. We have people from Australia and New Zealand, and that is a long, and, and South Africa, all of those places, a long way to come from. Um, the second thing is British rowing, and it's been great because uh, all departments of British rowing have pulled together to enable this to happen. And uh, that's both the, the GB rowing team and also um, British rowing as well. And then FISA, and there are two commissions in FISA who've been particularly involved in organising this, and that is the Medical Commission, Sports Medicine Commission, and the Competitive Commission. And both have been, without their support, this would never have happened. Um, they've been very generous. And um, one of them said to me that um, medics and scientists are very generous people. So we'll support you to run it. So thank you very much for that. Um, our speakers, who without exception, when we asked them if they would speak at the conference, have said yes. And that's pretty amazing, because we're not giving them an awful lot. <laughs> and uh, UK Sports, who without, uh, we couldn't have done this. And I'm going to go back to SAS, because SAS have actually made us, again, view this very differently. The first meeting that we had, in terms of looking at this conference, we had about 20 people in the room. Normally, we'd have had about three if it had been British Rowing running it. And, uh, and that was because they brought everybody together at an early stage, so the AV company, the caterers, um, all of their staff. And their staff have very generously agreed tomorrow to come in without exception to make sure that this can run and bearing in mind that Saturday is definitely not a working day for them. So that's been absolutely great. Um, 
I want to take a few minutes also to tell you exactly how this will work. So um, you have in your pack got a map, and I will allow you to look at your map if that would help you, and also to look at the program. Um, we have, at the moment, we're in Whittingham House, which is building number three, and the registration was in building number two. Uh, building number two will have uh, refreshments in there, so there'll be refreshments in the main building, but also in, in building number two as well, which is... Um, which, as I say, is where you did your registration. Um, that room will also have some of the posters in it as well, around the room. So you may want to go and spend some time in there having a look at those poster presentations. It will also have um, a SIS, uh, and uh, Cormac will be there as well with his power to row. No, power to row? Sorry, I've forgotten what it is, Cormac. Sorry? Row catcher, okay. This is row catcher. Um, we are going to give him an opportunity tomorrow, to uh, today rather, at lunchtime. So if anybody is interested in learning a bit more about row catcher, he will be in the stable block from uh, 12 o'clock, 12.30. Uh, and again, um, tomorrow when we do the post presentations, there'll be an opportunity to go and see what his row catcher can do. We are going to be using this room for most of what we are, most of the presentations, but we will also be using the hub as well, which is building number one. Uh, and this afternoon, you'll see that some of you will be going over to the hub. There are another set of post presentations over there as well, which I would also encourage you to uh, have a look at as well. Um, there, there is good signage around the site, so hopefully no one will get lost. But uh, if you do, um, please do just come and ask one of us. And if any of us have got, org if we've got organising committee, uh, then we should know exactly where you need to be going to. <coughs> so what's the purpose of the conference? Why did we set embark upon this in the first place? Well, the first thing was to bring people together with a passion for sport, and in particular rowing. And I know many of you as scientists don't originally come in as rowers, you come in maybe and then you get, you, 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 you learn to love rowing as we uh, coaches do. It's to share best practice and explore new ideas and areas for research, um, to learn and develop, and then to create new collaborations, whether across disciplines of groups of researchers or individuals. Um, hopefully, to have fun and make new friends um, and to challenge the status quo. And uh, finally, I wanted to do, we had a, an excellent presentation yesterday from Catherine Granger, who really gave us an idea about um, what is it that the uh, rower would like from their sports science and sports medicine support. I thought there's a couple of things I'd just like to, um, to make you perhaps a little bit aware of. Um, I went to a very interesting coaching seminar this week. And they define coaching as a concern for the person's development, performance, and well-being. And I know that many of you are not just scientists, that you have to have great skills in terms of coaching the coaches and coaching the rowers and getting over your messages to them. So I'm sure you're all concerned, not just about their performance and development, but also about their well-being. And just maybe we should be thinking about what does that look like for the rower? Is concern for their well-being being there at their elbow every time, or is it empowering them to go out and do it for themselves? A couple of innovations that we have got at this conference as well is that um, there will be some blogs that will be written from the conference. There will be tweets going out as we are going through the day. Um, we have got an AV company that are involved in it uh, who are going to be um, doing the filming and the blogs, uh, sorry, the, the presentations, the keynote presentations, anything in here will be videoed and it will go up on either the British Rowing website or the FISA website over the next few months. So uh, that is, um, that for me is where, why and where and how we actually brought this conference together. Um, but I'd like to hand you over now to John Christoph, who, uh, who is uh, the president of the uh, Rowing Federation, FISA, 
and he's going to do uh, say a few words to you. Dear Chairman of the British uh, Rowing, dear Anna Marie, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, depending on where you are from, in which country uh, you, you are, the tradition allows you to um, um, more, or more or less time, actually, two days or week, to present your best wishes for the new year. Let's consider that uh, it's still time today, and therefore I will take the opportunity first to wish you all a happy and successful new year for you, your families, and, and, and in your activities. What do we usually wish in priority? In France, we are used that the very first wish is actually about good health. We wish good health. Health or good health is indeed a big, of big preoccupation for each of us, our families, our friends. When it comes to sport, and even more to elite athletes, health takes another dimension and is of utmost importance. It's not a, only about feeling good, like for you and me, but it's even much more. Performance is the ultimate goal for the athletes, for the team, and performance comes from uh, the combination of uh, many elements, and performance is the result of a complex process in which many factors will interfere. In that respect, it is more than, than obvious that good health is simply the very first prerequisite and does play a major role. Sport and health are very closely linked. Certainly in special circumstances like injuries, and yesterday we had a very a fantastic speech from, from Catherine who explained us how it has affected his, uh, his uh, sporting career. But health is also importantly in terms of prevention and protection of the athletes. The medical staff and entourage do play here a key role. It's my great pleasure here today to be here today and to open this uh, sports science and medicine um, conference entitled Improving Performance Naturally, Transferring Sports Science and Medicine to Boat Speed. What an exciting theme. The program of the next two days is remarkable, fantastic, with distinguished and renowned experts and speakers. Thank you in advance to all of you who will contribute to this conference. I would like also to express my great gratitude and thank very much British Rowing and its partner, SAS and UK Sport, to host the event and for providing us with the very best conditions for this conference. As you will agree, to organize such an event requires a lot, a lot of work and preparation. I would like to thank very much all those who have contributed to that, uh, to that preparation. The FISA Competitive and Medicine Commissions and especially the chair of the Competitive Commission, Rosie McGlossling, who has led all the process and made this event happen. As you will acknowledge, FISA has always been athletes focused and we must be proud of it. I can assure you that we will push you in that direction. We must be proud that we have always taken the health of the athletes as a priority. 
We must be proud to be amongst the very few leading international sport federations to invest time, energy, resources on the protection of the athletes. And I must say, on the clean athletes. You will hear more in, in detail how FISA has contributed to that dimension. But now I wish you a very good conference. I wish you a very good work. Thank you.